Welcome back to Introduction to Programming and today we're going to start now with the seventh chapter which is the most difficult chapter for C and C++ programming. It's about pointers and memory allocation. Now we'll start immediately towards uh, repeating or with repeating what we already know. Whenever we start with creating a bit of data in our program, for instance, in this case we have a short integer uh, which we call myvar, and we immediately assign that the value of 42, then we know already that somewhere in our memory something happens. This data is being stored in memory, uh, which we here call RAM, for random access memory. You don't really have to know that much about the memory, apart from that it's a long, long, long list of cells, and that each cell tends to be uh, a byte, for instance. And that each cell is also addressable with its own address. Now, these addresses we've never uh, really taken too much uh, thought for. We didn't really think about those addresses that much yet. Um, but we know that those addresses exist. So when we uh, initiated, for instance, myvar as 42 as a short int, then we know that in the background, somewhere in our memory, there is a memory address, for instance, 102, where we know it's 102 myvar starts. And there we can create the number 42 as a binary um, depiction. For instance, with these zeros and ones, we can say this is the number 42. Um, and this number is uh, put in there and it's only holding or held in two bytes. And that's something we know because a short integer is indeed just stored in two bytes. So these two memory addresses. So each memory cell has the side of one byte. That's something we've seen. And variables have a name myvar, and a type, short int, as well as a value, in this case, 42. And the way this value is represented in this memory space is then also managed by the type. So the fact that this is a short integer, could be a unsigned or signed, um, has, this has an effect on how the zeros and ones are depicting this 42 over here. Now suppose that this myvar is located at address 102, and its myvar has indeed a size of two bytes because it is a short int. If it was an integer, for instance, it would have spanned all the way from 102 all the way to 105 in memory. So this is something we already know when we define a variable and we assign it a value that somewhere in memory these things are reserved for us um, by the, the computer. Now, we can use, however, also pointers in this regard to get those, to those addresses. Um, and a normal variable uh, acts like this. So we have, for instance, my age, which is 25, and which is of type integer. Um, that is something that we can immediately think of uh, in this way. So we basically have then reserved four bytes. Um, this, those four bytes have lots of zeros and ones that depict the value 25 and they start at a certain address, without us knowing really where in memory this myH is really stored. This is something that uh, the operating system typically um, manages for us. It is, however, sometimes interesting to do this, and this is the power that a pointer gives you. A pointer is defined very similarly. The only difference is that there is this star. We know already that if you have a variable name, it can't start with a star. It can only start um, with characters or with letters um, or numbers, but then uh, no, the numbers can start with, uh, for instance, underscore is a possibility, um, but any other symbols are not. Therefore, the star it cannot start with. So the star is not part of the name of what you're trying to define here. The name is actually ph. Um, this is just a name, and it is has to do with an integer, but it's not an integer. It's actually um, a pointer to an integer. So these two belong really together. And what this means is that pH is something that tells that, that uh, there is a, a memory address that is of type integer and that it's pointing to words. Now if we want to point this to whatever is held into my H, we use this ampersand or the reference of uh, an existing variable. So in that case, what we have is that um, when we execute this statement over here, we have somewhere in memory a cell that holds an address. And this address is basically then a pointer 
um, to an actual address and we also hold in this cell the type of the thing that this is pointing towards, namely that this is an integer. And those two together allow us to think about, for instance, my age 37 as a memory address with a specific um, a set of addresses that are uh, that, that that this uh, variable is, uh, is is occupying. And then we can also, with a pointer, and that's what is happening here, change the value. So in that case, where we normally have pH over here, so the pointer towards the H, we have just this um, this variable here, here, which basically is pointing to the memory location of my age. If we then also uh, dereference this, then we can actually address the value that this uh, uh, memory location is holding. And this is quite powerful, as we will see in the next couple of slides. Now, the important thing to hold now is that pointers are always typed. That means a pointer is not just a memory address, like the 102 you saw in the previous slides, but it's a memory address plus a type. And a type tells already a lot about how this pointer can be managed, how much memory space it occupies, and how this memory space can be, um, can be looked at through a, a type, in this case, like an integer or a double. And then accessing the pointer or dereferencing the pointer, so accessing the value that this pointer is pointing towards, can be done with the star in that case afterwards. So the way you define a pointer is doing like this. The, the way you deal with a pointer is, for instance, like this. And the way you can get to the value that this pointer is pointing towards is like that. So this is something that you'll just have to get used to for now and that we will see again and again because it is so important to understand for the future of this course. Now, pointers can be used for multiple things. Now, one is um, if you want to store um, a link to the same object at different places. Um, so you want to, for instance, um, a point at a particular image or let's say a movie even a movie tends to be holding a lot of memory blocks in our computer now we don't want to copy this the whole time but we might want to point to this movie or we want to have a reference to this movie in different locations and then a pointer can actually point to the movie and then this pointer can be uh, situated at different uh, parts in the memory so we can have multiple pointers all pointing for instance, to the same piece of memory that holds a movie. The next thing that is coming up is dynamic memory allocation. So up until now, we've been very constrained. If we wanted to uh, create an array, we had to immediately say how big this array was, either explicitly by just giving the number, so we have an integer of 50, uh, or we have an array of 50 integers, for instance, or by immediately uh, initializing that array uh, with a curly braces by saying this is a, an array of five numbers, namely these particular numbers. It is nice, however, to also just instantiate an, an array of integers and not immediately have to say how many integers you want to hold, something that you want to do, decide later on. Now, this is something that pointers can be used for as well. This is called dynamic memory allocation. And that also is uh, basically being used in uh, implementing dynamic data structures. So, for instance, trees or um, double uh, or lists uh, that are doubly linked, so we can go forwards and backwards in the lists, and many other things. Also, that is a data structure that can only be implemented when you're using pointers. And later we'll see a lot more, namely using pointers in arguments, so that you don't. Um, um, as we've seen, if uh, we, for instance, have the, the swap function, we've already seen that you should not uh, expect that those uh, values actually get switched because uh, these are called by values, these parameters. Well, with pointers, you can actually call by reference. And if you call by reference, you can actually expect that those uh, exact um, uh, variables are interchanged with the swap function. That is something that we'll see later in this chapter at the end. Um, in section 7.6. Now, what is really of utmost importance is that point, pointers are dangerous because with pointers you can read and write to any memory location. That means you can override other variables even those variables were never meant to be overwritten. 
uh, even can be that those variables don't belong to the program that is assigned to you. Um, and with, uh, with that respect, the operating system tries to make sure that that doesn't happen, but it could happen and it could definitely generate loads of errors that are very indescriptive in terms of how that works. So in that case, you might get lots of core dumps and uh, an array um, and memory allocation errors, for instance. Now, the first thing we're always going to do is, if we use pointers, we will always initialize our pointers, and we'll initialize them to a uh, lo location where they don't do that much damage yet. And that is the null location. So if we initialize a pointer to null, so basically we assign them the value null, N-U-L-L capital, um, and for that we have to include a particular um, library, but if we do that, then our pointers are known to point to uh, an empty uh, set of memory that is not useful yet. So in that case, our compiler knows that this is a pointer that will later be assigned an actual value. And also here it is important to know uh, what our computer looks like from the inside. So we have a CPU which puts uh, things that we have to deal with, like numbers, for instance, in registers, so they can be summed up. So if you have two numbers, and those two numbers are being put in the registers, and they're being summed up by our arithmetic logic unit, for instance. Now, this is all happening in the CPU, but a CPU can only do this if those things actually happen to be in so somewhere in memory. And that's where we are going to look at uh, the most useful. Now, the memory, has different segments and there are uh, there's one segment that holds our codes so if you have an executable then that is basically somewhere present in memory that is called the program memory there's also static data which contains our variables inside our memory so if we uh, say we have an integer that is called i then this is uh, put into the static data and we have also um, local variables, for instance, in a function. Whenever we start a function, then that function is reserving somewhere some space uh, for a local variable, for instance, j, uh, which is then, for instance, a double. And that is going to be happening over here in the stack. Now, the stack is being grown, so as we enter more functions, for instance, recursively, then we also add here memory from the right to the left. Now, what we haven't seen so far is the dynamic data heap, which is basically the same as going from the left to the right. And there we can, for instance, allocate our own piece of memory within our program. And that is what we're going to see in the next weeks, how this works and also what the power of this means. So we can basically manage our memory ourselves and then create data structures that we haven't seen yet, but that will be very powerful uh, for programming.